Mike from Powersonic. In this video we're going to be looking at an installation that we had going on at a property um, kitchen rewire. Matthew's doing most of the work, I'm just filming him and you can see we have a few issues with the uh, camera's battery again, recording the whole footage on site. It's something that I need to get better at because we tried another time lapse again and it just killed the battery again. Um, so there's, there's something going on there, but we did get some pictures and I've talked through them later on in this video So I hope you enjoy it uh, while I am just on with you I will show you these so it's a new little addition to the to the pack outs I saw these on someone else's Instagram channel. It was uh, Pete Burke, I think and These are just big tubs so again. They just modular onto the pack out And you can chuck your chuck your stuff in there. So I thought that's ideal when you Need a few bits and pieces out of the van, like boxes of screws and and filler or um, sleeving or whatever else, and it's not in a in a container or um, in your stat system. Just so you can throw them in there, stack them up on the trolley, and boom them into sight. So, yeah, they're nice and useful. I've got a couple of those for my set, and a couple for another another set as well. And you can see it's getting a bit ridiculous. My set actually, so. Gonna have to maybe do something about about that. I might need another person to help me push it around. Uh, so yeah, there was, there was that, and um, yeah, just jump into the video. Hopefully you enjoy it. Sorry, I can't get everything in, into video format um, on site, but I've done my best with it. I hope you find it interesting, and thank you for watching. So welcome back. We've got a small kitchen um, rewire on with the moment. Uh, it's just an extra cooker circuit, some spotlights that need to go in, and a light switch that needs linking up. At the other side of the room oh and a, and a fridge socket and dishwasher socket actually so there's a little bit more to it spin you around there's matthew he's just been sweeping up like bit of sweeping up so you can see up the top there we've got the old square d split load board we've got this massive bulkhead here which we wasn't sure what or why that was there but it's actually turned out to be quite handy because we need to get a, a new six mil cable across for an oven that we're going to drag across in there. The new oven's going to live in this little spot in here, uh, the fridge there at the moment, and then next to that is going to be a big American fridge freezer. So we've got a socket outlet that's going where Matthew's marked on the wall there, and then this light switch here is going to be linked across to the other side of the room over here um, for the switches that come in from their dining room. To pop the lights on but we didn't want to talk about this the spotlights on the ceiling so to start with we had a, a pendant in the middle there and the customer wants a let's see if we can get a wider angle there we go customer wanted spotlights and it's always a bit of a, a task trying to get your cables about because there's a bathroom floor above here that's tiled and they didn't want any disturbance of that which is fair enough uh, so we was working from below and when you first look at this you often think well I'm going to have to make holes everywhere to get past the joists and you can see here they run they run that way so we've made marks on the ceiling where we've got the joists running there and this is where the spotlights were asked for by the customer they just want four it's not a big kitchen and um, yeah we managed to fish the cables across there's no noggins in on that route there so we were straight over these two were, were easy enough and then we just had to make an access hole Used a four inch fan hole cutting hole cutter to make the hole there. Pulled the pendant cable back and we can make our junction box up there now and then plug that hole. So, I mean, after all of that, we've got one hole in the ceiling to install these four spotlights, all from working below. Um, you don't have to punch the ceiling with a million holes trying to drill your joists. Uh, we did use, to help us a little bit, uh, got one of these. So, this is one of the inspection cameras. So we can have a look up the hole and see what's there and that's mainly so the other side of the joists you can check there's no pipes or cables when you drill through that you're going to hit them uh, we was lucky in this case that there is actually a cable route already there and we just followed that same route we reused the existing holes to fish a cable through this way and this way back onto those spotlights so now we can get those in the 64 mil holes for the spots and then we just plug that once we've made the junction box with uh, the, the four inch bit we've cut out. Matthew's preserved it. So yeah, you just, nice bit of timber across that hole and then we can re-plug that. The customer's re-plastering all this room anyway. 
So the ceiling's getting skimmed and all the walls are getting skimmed. There's a lot of boxing in that's getting pulled out and the pipe work's been sorted by a plumber. So it's uh, quite a lot of tidying up going on. We've taken this boxing lid off these pipes here mainly because we need to get a cable fished up the back from this light switch. Um, we're going to shift it a little bit, but we get the light switch up there and um, into this boxing and follow the cable route with the cooker above this. This little, if I spin you around this way. So we go above that fridge and then we can drop down into the light switch uh, that's going to go this side of the door. And then the customer can turn the lights on as they walk in from here as well. Uh, this has been boarded up by the customer, I'm not sure. I assume they're going to make that level with the finished wall surface. Um, but we didn't want to go chucking our cables in there just in case they weren't. Uh, so we're, we want to chop all our cables in now. Matthew's going to get these spotlights in and wired. we might as well get them back on so at least the customer's not without lights. But I just wanted to show you that so you can see how um, getting four new spotlights in, even when you're working from below, you just need that one extra hole. So, I mean, the best thing you can do is mark out first. So we've basically gone 900 off the corners in both directions. So this room's roughly three metres square. So we've brought them in 900 off each corner and... Um, once you've cut those holes, and 900 is a good number because usually your joist spacings are 400, so you're going to be end up far enough away from a joist not to be um, entangled with one. And that was the case on these. Uh, and then you really just need to work out how to get your feed over to the new lighting circuit then. I've seen people before might mark the joists and then make holes either side of the joist, drill holes through them, then cut the holes for the spotlights and pull all the cables in. And when they're finished, they've got about... 10 extra holes in a ceiling that they need to fill and patch when if you just actually mark and measure your, your spotlights out first cut your holes and then think about your wiring route if there's no access above and uh, you can do it pretty simply Matthew did want to make another hole over this side when he wasn't really thinking because he's a bit of a dick, dipstick not to avoid drilling the pipes yeah and um, he was also going to leave half the kitchen lights disconnected because his small little peanut brain couldn't figure out that those wouldn't actually be wired at all. So we would have had two working and two not, and he'd been stood there scratching his head wondering what he'd done wrong because uh, he doesn't know how to join A to B. Might be able to make the connections all right. So yeah, we'll get on with that now. Matthew's gonna get those in. We're gonna have fun doing that. We'll get the ceiling plugged and then I'll jump back on and show you those turned on and working. And then we'll get doing some more of the dusty stuff when we've covered up some of these units. I mean, this is all coming out. It's gonna get ripped out by the customer, but they've got their own stuff out on the side look so we'll have to get some dust sheets slung over that and make sure we're not getting it covered when we come to chop this side out because there is a little bit of dusty stuff there we've got to chop out for that socket and chase up and then chop out for this light switch and chase up and same near the door as well so we'll get on with all that and then once we're a bit better straightened up i'll jump back on the video and again this boxing we've just made a little hole in this corner here and that was really so we could see what what it was um we didn't just want to start smashing up through the bottom of it without knowing what's in there and it is a huge void it's just got a piece of timber across there's no steel in there i wondered if it was a steel under the stairs or something but no it's just a big bit of timber um strung across there for whatever reason i don't really know it probably come out truth be told but uh, it's not on the plan so it's staying in and we can draw that draw our cables down the back of it so we'll get on with that jump back on in a bit Hi, uh, it's Mark from Powersonic. Unfortunately, we couldn't finish filming the rest of that job. Our batteries went flat again, so we've got some pictures um, to show you of the installation. And the first one is actually inside the consumer unit. Um, this is after Matthew's put some bonding into the chases as well. And you can see it's actually fairly tidy in there. There's a redundant circuit of some description that um, has been left in those uh, chop blocks. And there's some circuits that have been extended as well with the crimped connections but, but otherwise it's pretty tidy um, it's in it's in good condition for its age there's nothing particularly wrong with it other than the fact it's plastic um, so it's remained and whilst it would be nice to get a nice metal clad one in there um, the customer doesn't have the budget right now so that's been left for the time being and hopefully we'll be back in the near, not too distant future to um, tidy it up even further and get some RCBOs in but for the minute the primary concern was getting the new oven circuit connected and you can see there Matthew's popped the bonding in um, ready for the final skim coat it's just really to get over all of our cabling and make sure everything's um, tidied up in the way we want um, this is we've had to cut a few hatch holes 
I don't know if you remember, but there was a bulkhead running along the um, the wall that leads to the hall, and it was a really narrow void. It was a funny construction, so there was it is actually quite a big bulkhead, but there's like a a timber um, floor in about a hundred mil up or so. So we had to make some access holes to run our cables um, underneath, and this is just the way we patch them back up. So a timber batten across the top. See Matthew modelling that piece of timber is slotting in there. And actually, if I go back to that picture. You can see what I mean about the access. So there's like a like a floorboard there, but there's no access to that above. It is like in a in a void underneath the bathroom floor. So there's not a lot we could really do other than make the holes. And you'll see here that's the the holes there. Uh, and again, these are the spotlights in the ceiling, so they're all up and in. And um, you can see the minimal damage as we showed in the video already. And that's so that's it plugged. So Matthew's got it plugged, and again he did that to all the other ones. This is the ceiling itself, so you can see that was the hole we cut to um, fish the cables through. So we could check and inspect each side of the joist to make sure there was no pipes or cables as you're drilling through. It's important that you do see both sides because you don't want to be drilling into an old lead waste pipe, for example. Uh, so you always need eyes on both sides of the joists. So that's why we had to make that incision there. But we plugged it back up with a um, hole we cut out in the same way with a piece of timber across the top. And that's all ready now for the client. I mean, the whole ceiling's getting over skimmed. Um, but I mean, you, you could probably, for the work we've done, sand that away so you'd never see it again with a second fill. But there is like quite extensive cracking over here and stuff, which is why the, the customer's having it replastered. There's a load of pipe work in here as well that's getting chased in. So it's all changing um, and been tidied up by the plasterers. But we've made a nice, neat job of it for the time being. And you can see here, that's Matthew's first coat of bonding gone in. Again, it's always a rough mix to start with, so it's um, just to literally get some nice sound and solid um, covering in the chase, and then you can get a, a finished fill on top. Uh, it's not worth worrying too much about this other than making sure it's it's reasonably flat and level, and that you've keyed it so you can get a nice good fi um, finished coat on top, which you will have done. Oh, so I've jumped past the picture there, so if we go back this one, this is him um, getting his ZS with the looks of it from the cooker circuit i wouldn't have thought that is the actual cooker circuit though because that's quite a high reading um he's maybe done that off the socket circuit i'm assuming i'd have to see the certificate to check um so here we are you can see he's got the the bonding in again on the wide chases all bonded over the patches ready for that final skim coat that's his socket circuit so i mean if he's getting that on a, on a 2.5 mil socket radial i would expect he's getting a little bit lower than what he's shown on that other picture for the for the cooker one so we'll have to have a look at his certificate and see what he actually recorded um, these are just a selection of pictures he's um, sent across to me he's been good enough to do that seeing as we um, lost power in the old video recorder on the day um, so we've basically got a cooker circuit that's gone in with an isolator um, that's to the side of the fridge freezer that's going in here. It was as close as we could get it where it was accessible. There's no cupboard storage or anything on that wall that we could put the um, switch in. So it was, it was the nearest place we can get it, so at least it can be switched for maintenance. The spotlights in the ceiling, which are fire rated and IP rated, um, there is a heat detector in there as well. Uh, we've also got the holes patched back up. And you can see, ready for the plasterers to come in and work their magic and tidy everything up. Um, again, even further, the new kitchen going in. And I'm hopeful that once that kitchen's gone in, um, the client will have have some funds to update this. Um, I mean, again, there's nothing really particularly wrong with it other than the fact it's a split load board. And I'd prefer to have RCBOs if it was my own property. And I, I would always suggest the same to to a client. Whilst you can't go around coding them on EICRs, you can make a case for usability um, and and um, less. I mean, it's not a nuisance trip when something's operated, but it is a nuisance when it turns off more circuits than it needs to in operating. So I would always make that suggestion to somebody. And the fact that it's plastic and it's over the back door, um, it is not ideal, and um, it would look a bit neater and tidy. I mean, that was the primary issue with the actual client she didn't like how it looked because it looked a bit scruffy and yellowed from being in the kitchen probably for 20 years um, so yeah that's um, to be changed and sorted out but you can see whoever's wired that hasn't done an awful job they've had to extend a couple of circuits there you can see where they've crimped um, there's some redundant circuits that have been disconnected I think one of them is from an old cooker on the other side of the kitchen that used to be there 
and there's a radial circuit as well that we noticed i think that was probably for an old an old spare in the kitchen it might be for an old water heater maybe or something i don't know and that's disconnected as well so that's probably what that other one is there looking at it again if we get the job of tidying all that up we can um, investigate that further uh, we've just installed the new radial circuit for the cooker and the radial circuit which is shown here on this um, b16 for that um that that socket that's gone behind the fridge freezer uh, so yeah that was that one tied up really i would like to have filmed more on site but i thought we'd get a few pictures at least and talk through them so you can have a look and um it's not the, f the finished article i think we are going back once the plasterers and kitchen's been fitted to connect the appliances so with some luck, I'll maybe sit on this video for a bit and see if we can get some footage of the finished job as well. And grab all that certificate Matthew's completed and have a look what he actually recorded on that cooker circuit. And if it is not 0.52, um, we'll maybe have some questions to ask of him because that's an actual shorter run than the 2.5mm that he's run for the fridge freezer <laughs> still air socket. I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's not. It's probably a measurement he's made off the back of the socket comparing the two and it's just not been pitched in a way that makes a lot of sense uh, so yeah that's that one let me see if i can jump back over to the um, screen here and i'll jump out on that and record something on my phone as an intro and outro to this video and i hope you enjoyed it please like and subscribe and catch you on the next one as ever thanks for watching that one i hope you enjoyed it please like and subscribe to the channel and um, check out the next video as and when it comes out please look back through some of our older videos if you're new to the channel uh, thank you to everyone who has subscribed. We've cleared 100 now. It's um, it's such a small number, I know, in terms of other social media megastars in the electrical industry. Um, but I'm just trying to raise the profile of um, apprenticeships and the benefits of them and demonstrate some of Matthew's work um, and my supervision of that work and how we manage it through our small little business. And I hope you're finding it interesting and entertaining. And I'll keep the content coming. Hopefully the channel continues to grow. And thanks to everyone who's commenting and getting behind me in, in doing this. I really appreciate it. See you on the next one.